Welcome everyone to another of our weekly investment videos and many thanks once again for tuning in. Bond yields have been falling dramatically over recent weeks with the US 10-year Treasury breaking through 120 basis points, sending shockwaves throughout global equities. Is this the start of a much more significant sell-off or is it simply the natural course of markets? To give us some clarity on this, I'm delighted to talk once again to Hugh Gimber, Global Market Strategist at JP Morgan, who I have no doubt will have so, some interesting takes on current events. But first, before we get into the content, if you are enjoying the videos that we put out on a weekly basis, it would be fantastic if you could subscribe. It gives us such a great platform to be able to deliver this content and you really would be supporting all of us. So onto the content. Hugh, welcome back to the channel once again. Um, equity markets are selling off. Bond yields are walking down the street with a sign on saying the end is nigh. Um, what's going on? Well, thanks for having me back, first of all. And the bond market is a fascinating place to start, I think. As you say, it's left a lot of people scratching their heads over the past couple of months. So let me try and break this down. I think there's no one single factor that's responsible here. It's quite a long list, but I'll try and, uh, and walk <laughs> you through them. So first of all, supply and demand. Second of all, the inflation outlook. Third of all, the growth outlook. Okay. So supply and demand, basically, for a multitude of reasons, I think you have much more demand for US Treasuries at the moment than you do supply. Mm -hmm. So the demand is being driven, first of all, by the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. still buying $120 billion worth of bonds every month. Second, I think it's being driven by institutional investors who've seen a very strong run for equities over the past 12 months and are now starting to rebalance some of those portfolios, locking in some of those equity gains. Third, I think it's about international demand. Mm -hmm. So when you look at other global government bond yields around the world, really no yield on offer at all, people shifting to the higher yielding US Treasury market. Then on supply, mm -hmm. you've got less issuance than you'd normally have in the US Treasury market at the moment. Because what happened last year was that the US Treasury went out, issued all of this debt to build up a massive cash balance yeah. in case they needed it to deal with the pandemic. This year, you've seen them starting to run down the amount of cash that they had in effectively their kind of general account at the Federal Reserve. Yeah. So you've had a huge amount of demand and you've had limited supply. That's point number one. You can see this is complicated. Point number two is the growth outlook. So clearly in the last couple of weeks, especially, we've had more concerns feeding into the bond market and the equity market about the path of the Delta variant. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to say here, Nothing's really changed from a data perspective. Yeah. Nothing's really changed about how effective vaccines can be against these um, different variants based on the data that we have. But the path for the reopening is looking a bit bumpier than probably people thought a few months ago. So we're seeing this in the UK at the moment. Freedom Day was long heralded, but probably doesn't feel quite as free uh, as many people might have expected just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Third is on the inflation outlook where what we've learned over the past couple of months is that the inflation debate is still going to rage for some time. Mm -hmm. There's been plenty for people in the camp to say this is just a temporary reopening effect. Yeah. There's also been some support for people in the camp saying, no, actually, wages are rising, housing costs are rising. This could be a longer last problem. Mm -hmm. We could spend all day on that. Yeah. But I think what matters for the market is that the Fed has said there is a limit to how far markets can go in terms of pricing higher inflation. There is a threshold, and if we see markets getting ahead of themselves, then we will step in. Mm -hmm. So supply and demand, point number one. Mm -hmm. The growth outlook, I think people becoming more aware of the risks from the Delta variant. And then the third, the inflation outlook, where the debate continues, but the Fed has at least said there is a threshold above which we'd want to be acting. Yeah. Taking those 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 factors into consideration and kind of looking at the beginning of this year where everything was about the consensus short duration reflation trade, has that trade now run out of steam? 
I think it's lost steam, but I think it will gather momentum again over the next six months. Mm. So if you look at how strong the global economy is today, that's not consistent, in my view, with a US 10-year Treasury yield below 1.2%. The two are very difficult to match up. So I do think that as the global economy continues to recover in the second half of the year, and markets start to focus more on the prospects for central banks to be pulling back the massive amount of support that they've been putting in, eventually bond yields will push higher again in the second half, and that that will sort of reignite the reflationary environment that we saw, particularly in the first quarter of this year. Yeah. But that's not going to go in a straight line. Mm. You know, we've seen that this year markets have been pretty choppy. When we published our mid-year outlook, we've called it still up but bumpier referring to the path we think for equities still room for risk assets to gain but likely a choppier more volatile environment ahead yeah so so looking forward am i am i right in thinking that it's the, the best thing again diversification foot in both camps what what how, how are you guys suggesting positioning moving forward of course so i think in the fixed income market it's about flexibility primarily you want to be able to be investing in strategies that can trade these markets on quite a tactical basis and identify opportunities where markets have just mispriced the economy. It's about giving fixed income managers the biggest opportunity set possible as well. So looking to markets such as the Chinese government bond market, where there's still a bit more room for the central bank to maneuver if they feel necessary. Mm -hmm. It's about thinking as well about alternative products that can offer diversification, as, as you say. So either things like real assets, if you're thinking especially about inflation or perhaps macro type hedge funds to offer a bit more ballast in portfolios to complement fixed income. And then in equities, we do think that as yields start to resume that upward path, it should lead to more favorable prospects again for value oriented strategies. Uh, But as you say, I think there is worth maintaining a bit of balance in portfolios this year because clearly the last few months have shown us how easy it is to be caught off guard by everyone trying to move in the same direction. Absolutely, yeah. I think I think you're right. The last the last few months it has it has been um, a whip soaring uh, roller coaster ride, which um, it isn't usually the case in our industry. It used to be quite sedentary, but it's a fascinating time, and and one of the reasons why we get you on the channel is to provide us with that guidance, with with that clarity, with that view from JP Morgan. Hugh, once again, absolutely marvelous to speak to you. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll catch up soon. Thanks, Andrew.